Welcome to the Forensics Detailing Channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the new Japanese wash method and also springtime decontamination to get your car at its best for the summer months. A warm welcome back to the channel, guys. So spring is a cool time of year if you're into detailing. Things start warming up and it becomes a pleasure to spend time getting your car looking nice. And when you do get your car looking nice, it stays nicer for a bit longer. And it's generally easier to clean because it's not covered in heavy winter road film and salt and grime and all that stuff. And it's a different type of dirt. It's more like dust, bugs, pollen. And you're more, more of your enemy is actually getting your, your paintwork free of kind of contamination, getting it freshly protected and then just enjoying it for the summertime. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a new um, wash method for your car that's called the Japanese wash method, which is quite interesting. It's different to the normal traditional approach that we take in the UK. And we're also going to walk through all of the different steps that you can use to decontaminate your paintwork prior to then polishing and putting down fresh protection and then essentially your car's looking good. So with the Soft 99 Japanese wash method, there's two main chemical options, if you like. The first is using the pure creamy shampoo from Soft 99, which is a pH neutral, um, pure shampoo, so it doesn't contain any waxes or it's not gonna leave anything behind on the surface. So if you're washing a car to then go on and prepare it and decontaminate it and clay it, then the pure shampoo is the best option. And you use that with the Kujitsu, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, soft sponge that has three layers, the top kind of waffle layer with little pockets. It's a very soft sponge. The middle layer, which is designed to aerate the, um, the uh, shampoo inside. So as you're kind of squeezing it, moving it around, it's drawing air in and you're getting loads of thick suds. So the main thing with this is it's very soft guys and it also works really well with waterless washes. Okay, so that's option number one. The second option is if you've got a car that's been prepped, decontaminated, polished and protected and you're just maintaining it, is to use the Kwame shampoo that comes in a pack with a very similar sponge that's got the, the fins on top. And um, this is gonna add sort of gloss agents and um, things like that, protection products, that are just gonna maintain the shine on your car. So this really, for maintenance washes of a car that's all, all been prepped and, and sealed and whatever before, and this for a general purpose wash where you're gonna go on and do your thing after the wash process. So now we're ready to start washing our car. As always, you wanna pre-wash the car, you can put some of the creamy shampoo into your snow foam lance, spray it over the car, let it dwell for a bit, blast it down, and it gets any of the kind of lo loose dirt and dust off of the car and stuff like that before you go in and contact wash. Now, with the Japanese wash method, you're gonna need one bucket and a grit guard, and you fill that bucket up with clean water, no product. You take the creamy egg shampoo, and you put it directly into the sponge. Now you can actually take some of this solution, for example, 100 mil or 50 mil, and mix it down about one to four or one to five with water in another bottle, because that's still quite concentrated. So you could use, say, 50 mil of products and 200 mil of water, 250 mil of total solution should be enough. Dunk your sponge in a bucket to get it nice and wet, load it up with about 50 mil of that wash solution, and what that's going to do is when it's in the sponge, you're going to notice it's going to aerate it and make it really thick and foamy so that when you actually go onto the paintwork, you've got tons of suds on the actual sponge. Um, then you're going to go over, contact wash your particular area, and when you're ready to clean off the sponge, go into the bucket, just work it, squeeze it, get all the dirt and the solution out of it, get it clean, bring it back out, pour some more solution go in and do another section so you can clean it off as required. As always, when you're going over the surface of the car, the, the important thing is pressure. Do not pressure heavily into the paintwork. The sponge is gonna do the work and it's just gonna lift off the light dirt that's on the surface. Now in the UK, the sponge is much maligned. If you use a sort of yellow sponge in a bucket and go over your paintwork, you're gonna get all sort of criticism from your detailing neighbors, <laughs> brethren. Um, the fact of the matter is you can wash your car with any wash media and there's advantages and disadvantages with all of them. With sponges, they can be used absolutely safely. Uh, they're also great for waterless washes, as I mentioned earlier on. The key thing with them 
is make sure you get most of that dirt and dust off of the surface first with the pre-wash. And when you are using them, don't pressure in really hard. Just let the actual surface of the sponge, and it's got a kind of waffle texture on there, so there's little pockets and stuff like that, and there's less pressure, to just gently lift off the dirt. You do that, you'll be absolutely fine. <coughs> What's the advantage of the um, Japanese wash method, if you like? Well, the main thing is you've got a lot more solution, and a lot richer solution on your in your wash media, which is cool. The next thing is you haven't got to kind of load up with wash media from the bucket. Um, it's going to be, you're going to have plenty of it there. You're just using that bucket of water to clean out the mitt. Because you haven't got two buckets, you're saving water. Another feature of the creamy shampoo, guys, it's highly soluble. And if it dries on the panel, it will actually dry clear, but it will still rinse off of whatever products left there when it dries will rinse straight off of the panel afterwards so you haven't got to worry too much in the sun about getting kind of soap stains and horrible marks on the car if the shampoo is allowed to dry so that's another advantage of this particular product now for me with my m4 i use that on a lot of motor circuit track days and whenever i do the front of the car in particular gets plastered in little tar spot marks rubber hitting it and kind of leaving little bits of track rubber on the front of the car. And it also gets plastered in bug splatter and other weird kind of things. So I need to constantly kind of decontaminate my car because a lot of the stuff that's put down on it doesn't come off during the wash process. So Soft 99 have got a whole suite of decontamination products. Whenever you heard, hear the word decontamination, it sounds very technical. But it's not that technical, it really just means the stuff that you can't get off with these kind of mild shampoos, which are really just designed to kind of provide a little bit of lubrication and a slight bit of cleaning power through emulsifying like light surface dirt. But things like fallout, tar, bugs, adhesive, overspray, um, you know, sap, all these other things that get onto your paintwork and just will stay there unless you do a full decon. How often do you need to do a full decon? Depends on the car, but if you're using that car throughout the year, I think it's a really good principle to decontaminate your car fully at least once a year. If you're tracking it, you're gonna to need to do it quite regularly or it's, else this is gonna build up. Some of the things that I really pay attention to is bug splatter, because I've seen firsthand what happens if I go on a track day and it gets covered in bugs and I leave that splatter, it can etch the paint. So I like to get that off quite quickly um, and I like to get it all off as well. So, let's look at this first product, guys. So this is a water-based product called Stain Remover from Soft 99. And you can best use this during the pre-wash stage, in my opinion, although you can use it at any point after the car's clean. But you're gonna be able to stain, um, spray this onto specific stains, like bugs, um, anything that's stubborn and a milder kind of detergent won't affect then this stuff, you can spray it on, allow it to dwell, and then pressure wash it off if, the, if you're using it like as a pre-wash, or if the car's clean, you can agitate it a little bit with a brush or a microfiber just to help lift whatever is on there. So that is the stain remover. We used that first out of all of these products. We then went on to our normal wash process where we covered the car and actually covered the areas that I'd use the stain remover on with a blanket of the creamy shampoo, just allowed that to dwell for a little bit and then pressure washed off. After that, we used the creamy shampoo to do the Japanese wash method for the first time. Yeah, and it works. Pretty similar to my one bucket wash method that I was talking about about seven or eight years ago where I used to have a little bottle. Those of you that have followed the channel, I used to call it a booster bottle and I would mix the shampoo down and spray it directly into the wash mitt so you could get you know that contact and it's not too dissimilar to the manufacturers that say you know squirt all your shampoo into the wash mitt, mitt or whatever when it's in the bucket and you fill up the bucket because you get more suds on the mitt so if you like thick suds I think the Japanese wash method is going to be quite cool for you and the main other claim is that it's less water to lug around because you've only got one rinse bucket rather than a rinse bucket and a solution bucket so we then do our contact wash, and at this stage our car feels and looks clean. Um, we have then um, 
the actual chemical decontamination. Now, Iron Shermanator. <laughs> I like the name of this product, sorry, never do humour. So this is an iron terminator. This is a low odour iron fallout remover. What this product does is it reacts with any ferrous particles that are embedded into the paint or the alloy wheels and it dissolves the rust layer on that embedded ferrous particles and by dissolving the rust layer it shrinks the particle and dislodges it so it makes it easier to use. When you spray it on if you see purple bleeding out that shows that there is embedded rust and ferrous contamination there okay. After it's bled out agitation will be more effective so you can use it prior to washing but you're wasting a lot of the kind of product and all the stuff that's going to wash off anyway so you're perhaps best using it after the wash process it can be used on paintwork and alloy painted alloy wheel surfaces as you see on the alloy wheel as you see it turn purple that's the ideal time to start agitating it with a brush and dislodge all of that stuck on fallout on paintwork obviously you're not going to use a brush so when you spray it on and you see it bleed out, you can either pressure wash it off, or, or perhaps a better thing to do is just quickly wipe over the product very gently with a clean wash mitt, because that agitation is gonna help remove stuff. But this also makes an ideal precursor to claying, but because by shrinking the ferrous component, it's more effective to pull it out of the paintwork with the clay. So that's Iron Terminator. Um, it, it doesn't, all of these products have a real kind of eggy smell to them, but this is a low odour one, so the smell is a lot more subtle. Still has a slight whiff to it though. <laughs> they all do, they all do. The next product is a pitch cleaner, and this is an aerosol. So the term pitch cleaner might not be something you're so familiar with, but it's effectively um, a, it's like a hydrocarbon product, so it's not water-based, and it's gonna dissolve um, things that are not water miscible so tar spots is the main thing so this is really going to be useful for track day rubber as well you can simply spray it on that form of contamination leave it there for a couple of minutes and it will soften that off and then you can just gently wipe that tar off rather than trying to pick it off with your thumb and scratching all the paint up so this is effectively like a tar and glue remove but it's called pitch cleaner So now we've done the wash and chemical decontamination process, we're going to move on to the actual claying. Now claying really deep cleans the paintwork. Um, you can argue if there's less contamination on the car that these, this chemical decontamination is optional or you might want to use one or the other depending on what's on there. When you clay the car you absolutely strip back all of that stuff that's left behind and you should have silky smooth paint. Okay. Um, when your paintwork feels rough and knobbly, then there's lo typically there's loads of stuff stuck on there. So the rougher and, and more contaminated it is, the more you benefit from the chemical decontamination. Now, Soft99 have got two products that, oh, what's it called? <laughs> Surface Smoother, I think this is called, which is a more aggressive clay bar. And then they've got their Smooth Egg, which is the one that we're gonna be using. Because we've done the chemical decontamination, so hopefully by using the smooth egg, the less aggressive clay is probably going to put less marring in it than the, the aggressive one. So always use the one that's most appropriate to what you're doing. Now, one other little hack is we mix down some of that shampoo, um, one to five roughly, in this bottle at the start to use to pour into our wash mitt. You can then fill the rest of the bottle up with water all the way to the top and you'll have this at about one to 10 or one to 20, something like that. And you can use this, which is the creamy shampoo, as a clay loop and spray it on. And again, it's got the advantage that if it dries, it's not gonna leave any horrible residues on the car and it free rinses off of the car. So it makes a good clay loop and that's very cheap. So you're not introducing any cost. Work section by section, spray the, the, the shampoo or the clay lube, if you like, over your section, get it all nice and slidy, and that will just stop the clay kind of sticking and just helps you clay it more effectively. Um, just light pressure, nice fast hands, pin the clay bar down onto the panel and just gently go over the surface. Um, you will feel the contamination. Sometimes you can even hear it when you're taking it off of the surface, and you can definitely see it 
on the face of the clay bar once you pull it. What shouldn't be happening when you clay? If you're claying a car and you're getting massive chunks of like black dirt into this clay, then perhaps you should have done the chemical decontamination. When you clay, the biggest risk is not the marring from the clay itself, it's the marring from the contamination that you pull off the surface. And you kind of want to minimize that. You will be putting in fine scratches or fine clay marring, whatever you want to call it when you clay. So it's always a good idea to polish your car after clay barring. And that is the next step. So next up, we now have a clean and exfoliated car. So our paint surfaces are ready to then be polished. So we're going to use in this video the micro liquid compound from Soft 99. Now, this is a kind of user-friendly product that comes with an applicator. You can apply some of the compound onto the pad that comes with it, work it on a two by two section. That's a sensible area to carry. And just gently work this, follow the instructions, um, and then buff off the polish residue when you finish, then move on to the next section. Work your way around the entire car and you've then polished out all of that light clay marring. Now note, Soft 99 do also sell you a, a machine compound, if you like, you know, a heavy cutting compound, a medium compound, and a finishing polish, specifically more for machine um, application. But you can use the micro liquid compound on a machine polisher because the machine does all the work for you. So I've got this dual action polisher with a soft pad and I just put three dots on, worked in the two by two area and just did two passes at a medium speed, up and down with a little bit of overlap and then buff the product off. And that's gonna give me a nice shine and it's gonna remove any of that light surface clay bar marring. So that's probably gonna take you a good hour to an hour and a half to work your way around all the painted panels of your car. Then, <laughs> we're nearly there guys, we're nearly there. They've got a product called Silicon Off, which you can think of, and this is what it is. It's effectively a panel white product that can be used for removing polishing oils after the polishing process. It can also be used to remove the remnants of old waxes and sealants, so you can spray it onto that panel. Work panel by panel, follow the instructions, but that will degrease and get all of the polishing oils off of the surface. And then you are ready for the fun bit although you'll be getting tired by now. And that is putting the protection down. So we've already talked about all of the Soft 99 products. They've got a vast array of waxes, they've got ceramic coatings, they've got sealants, if you like. But I think their flag flagship product is this Fuso Coat 12 month wax, which is kind of PTFE based, very beady, very durable, very affordable, and they're doing loads of deals on it all the time. And a part of that will last you a long time. That's probably the best wax i think in their lineup that does everything although they've got a couple of other cool ones like the mirror shine if you're more into gloss and you like waxing all the time so have a look at the video we did that i'll link up there comparing all of the soft 99 waxes so at this point we are washed we're exfoliated and decontaminated we're polished we're degreased and we're protected <laughs> we're done then you're through to the finishing off jobs where you can dress your tires Maybe then go onto the inside and vacuum that out and do some bits and pieces in there. But once a year, it definitely pays to get all of that surface contamination off of your paintwork and reset everything, if you like. Um, that's probably one of the most important things. For me, I'm going to be doing that frequently. You're going to see me doing it probably every couple of months because if I don't, my paintwork gets plastered in... Um, in track rubber so yeah the pitch cleaner um, and some of these other products are becoming very useful for me so I hope you found that interesting guys what do you think of the Japanese wash method um, it's not too dissimilar to what we're doing but it just avoids the use of having to kind of dose out and carry around two buckets which is can be a little bit of a pain and I think the main strength is the way that the foam you know, you get loads of solution into the foam and it really aerinates it. And you get kind of like a nice thick layer, all slidey kind of lubrication stuff going on. You can, of course, adopt um, and use it with your wash media, but the sponge is better at putting in the kind of air into the solution to give you the foam. So that is it. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, 
The whole range of the products that we show here in this video will be linked in the description. They're available from the Soft 99 um, store and other distribution partners that I'll link in the description. Once again, thanks very much. Take care and stay tuned. i